Hello fellas, it's Ben, and before I get into today's video, I just want to throw something out there real quick. In an effort to always try to be improving my content and the medium that it's delivered to you guys on, I'm going to ask you, the viewer, what would you think of a Wiffle Statement Twitter? While other than following some creators that I really enjoy, I've never been a huge fan of the platform. However, that being said, I could see it having some solid merit for my content and for getting news out there to the community, as well as just quick thoughts that maybe don't deserve a whole video to themselves. Kind of just doing my part to keep the wiffle ball conversation going with you fellas. So if that's something you'd be interested in and something you think you'd keep up with, please be sure to let me know, and if it's something that you really don't care about, then also be sure to let me know. Now that that little PSA is out of the way, on to today's video topic, the first trade acquisition of this year's offseason for MLW, let's get right into it. If by chance you're not actively following MLW on social media, which I would recommend doing if you're a big fan of the league, it really does help you keep updated on what's going on. However, if you are not, it was recently announced that Michael Aguilar of the Diamondbacks had requested a trade, and he was promptly picked up not long after by the Wildcats, who sent their 2019 waiver wire pickup Josh Lucier to the D-backs in turn. Now, while neither of these players are stars of the league, they are both promising prospects, Aguilar in particular, so it's a trade I like to see of new talent in the league getting shifted around. So as to which team I think got the better deal, as I saw some people arguing about, I do think that's being a little presumptuous as both of these guys are going into their sophomore season, so we don't really have a huge sample size, and both of them have great opportunities to grow as players. Lucier did get some starts in 2019 from the rubber, and he does bring a decent arm to the Diamondbacks to help with their rotation. However, I think Aguilar's deal does fill a much bigger need for his new squad than that of Lucier's, and that need for the Wildcats is hitting. It may seem odd to think about, but the Wildcats did take home the MLW Championship in 2018, just one season ago. It was painfully obvious, however, that Kyle Schultz was carrying the team not just from the rubber, but from the plate as well. As we went into 2019, Wildcats fans hoped that Kelly and Purock, after getting some experience in the league, would improve at the plate. However, unfortunately, that just wasn't the case. Ryan Kelly stayed swinging below 200 once again, and Purock's 2019 average dropped by .041 compared to his 2018 season, all while playing in three less games. Schultz, meanwhile, did his part and crushed the ball. But as we really saw an increase in pitching quality across the board this year, now more than ever in MLW, teams need more than one strong bat if they really want to compete. And I think Aguilar could definitely fill that role for the Cats. Aguilar quietly put together an outstanding season, hitting 280 from the dish with a 357 on base percentage and really seeming to see the ball much better than his counterparts on the D-backs. Plus, Having a lefty in the lineup to go back to back with Schultz could prove to be a difficulty for pitchers trying to work through the Wildcats lineup. Overall, I think that picking up Aguilar is a very solid move for the Cats and shows that Kyle is beginning to work on bouncing back from the 2019 performance by making some strong manager moves this offseason. Meanwhile, for the D-backs, we will get to see how Lucier performs going to a young team that has nothing to lose and everything to gain. He could very well prove to be a huge building block in the D-backs organization, becoming a powerhouse in the league. And there you have it guys, my thoughts on the first trade to happen in MLW this offseason. If you guys did enjoy this video and would like to see more news and analysis on wiffle ball from around the country from yours truly, then please subscribe and drop a like, it would be greatly appreciated. Also, what do you guys think of this move? Good? Bad? For which team? And which player are you most excited to see play this coming season? Let me know below in the comments, and until next time, get out there and play some whiff, and I will be talking to you guys soon. Goodbye.